Hi, my name is Kara Buskmiller. I'm a maternal fetal medicine fellow in Houston, Texas, and I'm the president of Conscience and Residency, a 501c3 dedicated to helping residents of conscience make controversial ethical decisions during their training and medical students applying for such residencies. Together, we can make medicine thrive. I'm here to talk about how can you apply to OBGYN residency as a Catholic? There are several things that we don't provide if we adhere to the church's teachings and believe them to be true um, that are required by some OBGYN programs and uh, in, certainly included in all OBGYN training programs according to ABOG and ACGME requirements. And how does a Catholic apply to an OBGYN residency planning not to do certain things, for example, not to do sterilizations, not to uh, place long acting reversible contraceptives, not to provide any contraceptives, not to do abortions, not to do methotrexate, the list might go on a little ways and up to and including transgender medicine as things progress in terms of transgender ideology. How is this possible? The good news is it is. Our country is one of the few remaining English speaking countries that are friendly or at least permissive of this type of training where we don't do certain things according to our consciences. Various applicants uh, come to me as uh, the president of Conscience and Residency to ask how they can do this. And here's the uh, prepackaged spiel for you uh, put together in this video. You want to apply to the number of programs that your advisor who knows you uh, as far as scores, uh, grades, and other parts of your application, like letters of recommendation, who knows you on a completely secular level. If they recommend 70 programs, great, 70 it is. If they recommend 120, 120 it is. There's a lot of inflation going on in OB program uh, application numbers, uh, and we're trying to fix that as a specialty, but for the, for the moment, go with the number that your advisor tells you to do, even if it seems inflated. Don't change the number, but change the type of programs that you'll select. You want about a third, plus or minus, depending on your comfort level, of those programs to be known to be either friendly in the past to applicants like us, or you want them to be smaller or community, things that you could, would consider open or flexible to ideas like ours, ideas and practices. Not so much the ideas, they might not like automatically convert to your ideas, but to be flexible with how you as a resident will distribute the workload is very important. The smaller the program, the smaller the area, and the more conservative the area, the the more flexible programs will be. In, in addition, the more competitive you are an applicant compared to the program, the more flexible that program will be. If you're not a very competitive applicant for that program in its tier, there are, are there 50 people behind you who, you who will do those things and not redistribute the workload as far as contraception or tubules or other things, and they can take one of those 50 people behind you. And it might not be as worth it to apply to a program like that or treat it as this group of helpful programs that provide a bit of a safety measure um, for matching, which is very important. The top goal here is to become a pro-life Catholic OBGYN. And there are a couple of things that we're going to talk about as far as keeping that top goal um, in perspective. Um, so the next thing is, so number stays the same, selection changes slightly. The next thing is to salt your application with hints uh, in the resume section of your ERAS application. And this is to put things like CMA, CMDA, pro-life this, volunteered here, put things such that you can be seen as a person of faith, although it's not your entire application. I advise against putting things about uh, your particular beliefs, practices, plans, and choices in your personal statement. This might be very important to you. Becoming Catholic OB might be very, very important to you, as might NAPR technology, uh, NFP, uh, other things like this. But for the time being, you want to represent yourself as a whole person outside of those ideas and those things that you're saying no to. You're saying yes to a lot more, and you need to give yourself credit of that. You went to medical school, you worked hard like everyone else, and you are a whole person outside of your um, thinking that you're saying no to. There's a lot of positives about you and a lot of wholeness. Let that shine through in your application, especially in your personal statement, but drop some hints such that if a program is so closed to any ideas that might resemble faith or Catholicness or conservativeness, that they might say, you know what, better not to interview this person. And you want that. You want a trimmed down, effective, efficient list of interviews, and you want the truth from program directors as far as whether they'll uh, allow you to do these things or to not, or allow you to avoid doing these things or to not. So salt your application with hints, avoid putting big uh, disclosures about your choices in your personal statement. Now, there are two main strategies when it comes to interviews. Accept every interview. 
go to every single one, even if you're not sure how this might this program might react to your choices. There are two main strategies. Strategy number one is disclose at the time of the in-person interview. This class is lucky. You, I think you will interview in person just as the classes before uh, COVID had done. Interviewing in person allows this set of people who are making this uh, decision about going forward in-person interviewing is a comfortable place for those people to disclose the things that they will not do to the program director in an in-person interview. It's very difficult to do this, but I do recommend that you disclose before match. Disclosing after match is very tricky um, and can put a, a little bit of bitterness and some bad blood between you and the program as they might feel they've been baited and switched. Either way, either of these approaches that I'm going to talk about um, will disclose before the match, and it's just about the style in which you disclose and the timing of your disclosure. So approach number one, disclose at the time of the in-person interview in conversation with the program director or the associate program director, someone who is going to make key decisions about your acceptability as a resident and how your residency is going to go. This conversation is difficult. It is a little bit easier, actually, if they ask you because of those hints that you dropped. I see that you were in the Catholic Medical Association. Tell me about what you think the Catholic Church says about birth control. And notice how they ask that. It's not about your beliefs. They have to be follow very. They have to follow very specific rules about what they ask you. Um, but they might ask you about the church's position, for example, or they might ask you how you reacted to a recent thing they heard on the news about Catholics and birth control, for example. Um, so them asking is actually nice because then you don't have to shoehorn it in as a question amidst all your other questions and you can just respond frankly and easily about your choices it's easier as interview season goes on i promise um, and it does get to be very informative about yourself and about the programs as you see how you yourself articulate things and as you see the programs react usually you can tell whether people are telling the truth or not um, it's important if you're going to disclose in this way to do it in a way that gets you the most truthful answer to do that, I recommend putting the question in the third person, for example, by saying, how would you view an applicant who was choosing not to do tubal ligations uh, or to use any contraceptives? I recommend not listing abortion because they've got a very pat answer for abortion and they'll spend the whole answer focused on that. But you already know you have con like con congressional political you have protections against participating in abortion. You need to know these other things that you're not protected on unless the program director allows you to be protected. So ask about those two things in particular. If you also want to make sure methotrexate gets addressed, um, you can, but I don't think this is quite as necessary. Long story short, to ask this question in the third person helps the program director get some distance. It's an uncomfortable question for them to answer. They're not excited to hear it. That distance helps them give you a real answer and helps them consider the question without feeling so stared down upon. Now, it's not as though they're confused. You're not asking for a friend. You're obviously asking for yourself, uh, but it helps them a little bit to give the truthful answer. After you've asked, give them some space and then listen to their answers. If they ask further questions, try to respond. Throughout, maintain an attitude of humility. You want to reiterate to them, I'm coming to this program to learn how to be an OBGYN. There's a lot I don't know, and I, I'm okay with that. I, I know I need to learn about these things as well, and I'm happy to learn so that I can counsel well and care for complications. If you don't want to approach di program directors directly at an interview, for some people that sounds terrifying. Actually, for everyone that sounds terrifying, but you have to find out whether you're this person or another person who says, I don't want to burn all my bridges in this small community of academic uh, OBGYN, for example, or OBGYN in general, or OBGYN within this region in which I want to match. So I'm going to interview, be my best self, put my best foot forward, show them all the things that are saying yes about me, not the few things that I'm saying no to. And then if I feel that the interview went well, I'm going to rank them highly, then I will call the program director. I'll email back and forth with the program coordinator, get a time to speak with the program director, and then ask that question over the phone. You might preface the phone conversation with, I have a difficult question to ask you. You might ask that by email. That way the program director is not, you know, getting ready for some conversation about, um, you know, something easy, they're prepared for something like I have a difficult visa situation or a couples match question or something big. And this is something big. This is something that affects workflow. And we need to recognize that. Um, not that we're somehow ashamed of that or wishing we didn't do that. Um, but we can say, I appreciate that there's some real inconveniences in what I'm choosing to do. If they ask you, how is this going to work? You can give some examples um, of how this has worked out in the past. I'm close to going over my time, so I do want to be judgmental or be careful about how I use your time, but I'm always happy to answer questions. Um, you can reach out to me at cbuskmiller at gmail.com or at conscienceinresidency at gmail.com. My website is conscienceinresidency.com, and I'm happy to answer any other questions. 
With either of these two approaches you've disclosed before the match, you can then make your rank list exactly as everyone else does by saying, where would I actually want to go? And you can use your answers that you got and the comfort level with which you uh, got them uh, in your rank list, but you can make your rank list exactly as everyone else does and then hopefully celebrate on match day. It's a whole other talk to talk about how to go through residency not doing these things, but for now, I hope you've enjoyed How Do I Interview for OB as a Catholic?